A young girl was kicked out of a toy store due to her skin color, but her inspiring response left a lasting impact. Life can be unfair, and sometimes we encounter situations that change us forever. However, our attitude towards these challenges is what sets us apart. Let's hear about the following story that exemplifies this principle. Jason Williams, the owner of the Golden Swan, an upscale toy store present in all the city's shopping centers, yelled, What makes you think you can steal from me? You're all the same. With cuts and bruises on her face, the young girl pleaded, Please, sir, it wasn't me. Don't hit me again. Confess that you stole most of my merchandise, you thief. This is my esteemed store, retorted Williams. The girl's name is Maria, and she is a kind and charismatic 18-year-old. Everyone who knows her fondly calls her Little Maria for her endearing qualities. Maria is currently in her final year of business administration, and after her parents passed away in a tragic car accident three years ago, she has been working hard with her sister, Sophia, who is 20 years old, to support their household expenses and care for their younger brother, Matteo, who was only five years old at the time. This young girl's response to the store owner's mistreatment is inspiring and serves as a reminder that we must never give up in the face of injustice. A year ago, when Maria worked in a Chinese food restaurant, many customers asked for another waitress. She perfectly understood the reason for the change. Her boss immediately assigned her another responsibility to prevent Maria from accusing him of discrimination. Her own co-workers were upset when customers were served by Maria because most of the time they did not leave a tip which was distributed among the waitresses. Therefore, they had to share their tips with the only waitress who did not generate tips. Her brother Daniel found out about the things Maria was going through at her job and had spent weeks searching the newspaper classifieds for another job opportunity for her. Among the tireless search forums, he found a job opportunity for Maria in a well-known toy store called the Golden Swan, an exclusive toy store that was present in all the shopping centers in the city. When Maria went to the toy store, she was attended by Jason Williams, who was the owner of the Golden Swan. When he saw Maria without a preamble, he told her, We don't do any kind of charity here. Excuse me, sir, Maria told him. I come here for the job opportunity. At least you can read, the owner of the Golden Swan told her. Of course, sir. I'm in my last year of administration. The proprietor of the toy store was impressed by the young man's expertise and had no reason to refuse him the job. As time went by, the young man's performance brought great satisfaction to the toy store owner. He even acknowledged the young man's outstanding administrative skills by awarding him extra pay. Customers who had previously abandoned the store returned because of the excellent service and the satisfaction that the young manager provided. One morning, the toy store owner arrived with his son, Kevin, who was in a bad mood. The owner introduced Kevin to Maria, explaining that he wanted his son to learn about the toy business so that one day, he could take over. Maria extended her hand to greet Kevin, but he rudely slapped it away. Ignoring the awkward moment, the owner continued with Maria to his office. He congratulated Maria on the store's increase in new customers and requested that she teach Kevin about the business and its management. One afternoon, Kevin lost his temper with an elderly woman who asked for a discount on toys for her son. He unprofessionally and aggressively told her to leave the store and find toys elsewhere that her money could afford. Other customers who witnessed the owner's son's behavior quickly left the store, and even those who were already in the process of making purchases decided to leave. Maria approached the young man to inquire about his attitude towards the customers, to which the owner's son replied, Why do you care? I don't have to explain myself to someone like you. Don't forget, this is also my business. I can fire you whenever I want. A customer in her forties looked at the young man disapprovingly and immediately left the toy store. On the ninth day, when Maria presented her daily reports to the store manager, she informed him of what had happened in the afternoon with the old woman. The manager did not doubt Maria's account of the incident because he knew his son's behavior all too well. He complained to his son about his behavior, which had affected many potential sales. He reprimanded and threatened him, saying that if something like this happened again, he would have to bear the cost of lost sales. The owner's son thought of taking revenge on Maria for exposing him to his father. He took a copy of the store keys and the security passwords that his father had entrusted to him. 
That day, when the store closed, he returned an hour after Maria and locked up the shop in the morning. When Maria opened the store, nothing seemed out of place until she advanced inside and realized that the counters had been ransacked for money. She called the police and then her boss, who, when he arrived with his son, physically assaulted, kicked, and insulted the poor young woman. You're a thief, we trusted you, the owner's son shouted at her while she endured the abuse. The police took Maria, the main suspect in losing almost all the proceeds from the merchandise. The incident became a trending topic in the city news due to the severe beating and the discriminatory remarks made by the father and son towards the young woman. At the police station, Maria received a visit from a client who had witnessed the owner's son's behavior towards her with disapproval. This client was an important lawyer who specialized in defending human rights related to discrimination, racism, and xenophobia. Her intuition told her that Maria was a victim of a well-planned scheme. Therefore, she agreed to defend Maria and uncover the truth. After enduring a year and a half of legal proceedings to prove her innocence, it was revealed that the owner's son had not anticipated the security cameras in his father's business and neighboring establishments. These cameras captured him breaking into the store and stealing almost all of the merchandise's money, which he squandered on drugs and luxury items. This evidence made him a prime suspect in the crime. The young woman was found innocent and the owner of the toy store was sentenced to 25 years in prison for racism and aggravated assault against Maria Whitakers. The owner's son was also found guilty of robbery and hate crime, resulting in a 30-year prison sentence. Finally, Maria was able to return home to her family and received $1 million as compensation for the damages she had suffered. Maria expressed her gratitude towards the lawyer who took her case and fought for her innocence, and now she speaks publicly about her experience and how it has impacted her life. Unfortunately, racism is still prevalent in the 21st century, despite the progress of society. These stories are still happening in various contexts around the world, including in Montreal. One such incident involved a black man who was wrongly handcuffed by police and accused of stealing his own car. The incident has caused resentment among the general population towards the police in Montreal. The man spoke out about how he felt humiliated during his time in police custody and how he felt unfairly treated because of his skin color. On November 3, 2017, he was confronted by police and falsely charged with stealing a vehicle that was actually registered to him. The officers then discovered that they had misplaced the key to the handcuffs. The young woman, who wants the world to know she is not a criminal, recently found herself in even more uncomfortable situations after a video of her being arrested went viral on social media, according to the World Health Organization, who. Maria was stopped by plainclothes police as she was walking towards her car in a parking lot in Toronto. The police claimed that they suspected the car was stolen not because it had been reported missing, but rather because they had noticed some markings around the keyhole on its door. The woman's car is brand new, according to sources who checked it out, and there are no scratches on it. Maria said. I felt a person pulling my right hand from behind in an interview with CBC News. What's happening? I questioned the police, who did not identify themselves, and said that they were there for different reasons. Please show us your vehicle documents. They didn't ask me any questions without even informing me of what was happening. They just violently harassed and handcuffed me. Maria stated, I could be attacked anywhere for no reason, in another interview. I'm not a bad person. I experienced trauma. I believe this is prejudice, and I have been humiliated. Everyone I spoke with commented that things could have been handled differently. If they were white, they wouldn't have treated me that way. Maria, a recent immigrant from Nigeria who arrived in the country three years ago, works as a hospital orderly. The video clearly shows that she believes her race played a significant role in the incident. She can be heard saying, It's my car, why am I being handcuffed? It's disrespectful. Is it because of my race? The police are also seen in the footage, speaking entirely in French. Calm down, one of the plainclothes officers says to her. What do you expect of me? Have you been hurt? You're not even hurt. I didn't even touch you. Maria requested that they remove the handcuffs since they were hurting her. 
After realizing their mistake, the police were unable to unlock the cuffs because they did not have the key. You have someone in handcuffs but you don't even have the keys to get her out? Maria exclaimed in disbelief. What would you have done if it had been an emergency? In the video, the officer leans against the car and looks away from Maria to the person filming. Instead, he tells the person filming to stop recording because cameras are all over the parking lot. The police officers seem to be referring to their body cameras. I don't arrest people for the fun of it, he scoffs. You should have confirmed that I was the car's owner beforehand, Maria reprimands him. You should do your job properly. You need to complete your duties. The police officer condescendingly dismisses his trauma, claiming that it's over, that it's over enough. Sir, sir, please calm down. You were not injured. After a while, new officers arrived on the scene and also advised Dosa to calm down. If I were a suspect, I would have run away, the man asserts. I'm not a criminal. I work in the healthcare sector. This is humiliating. The man claimed that he now fears the police because of the incident, and he is requesting an apology. No one expressed regret to me, Dosa stated, adding that he had reported the incident to the police. He is also considering filing a lawsuit. We need grounds, said Allen Avenue, a member of the Red Coalition. The community needs reasonable grounds for an arrest. Activists asked if the car had any visible signs of attempted theft, such as clear markings, which prompted authorities to investigate, according to a tweet from the Montreal Police Service, and that a citizen approached it to claim ownership before they could finish their checks, according to a separate tweet. He was then briefly detained by the two police officers for questioning. Once the checks were completed, the individual was unconditionally and without charge released. The Office of the Minister of Public Security in Quebec and François Barr are initiating an administrative investigation. Nadal, the Minister of Public Safety of Quebec, also made a statement, saying that this cannot be swept under the carpet.